Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Swab Sufi from the Software Sustainability Institute, um, and I'm going to talk a bit about the SSI, not quite a lot about the SSI, and then some, uh, and then talk about our communities of practice work. Okay, so what is the Software Sustainability Institute? For those, uh, it's a national facility funded by uh, EPSRC and all the research councils, um, and we focus on kind of cultivating world class research through software. So, kind of better software, better research is our mantra. And yes, a t shirt does exist. So, um, software and code and processes and communities reach boundaries in their development that prevent improvement and growth. So, we hope to offer kind of expertise and advice and services to help them to kind of negotiate to the next stage. We run programs, events, uh, policy initiatives, and tools to help support communities developing. Uh, and using research software. So we basically ad advocate for all things research software from software itself, the people, um, the domains. Okay, so how are we structured? So we're structured in terms of a number of teams. Uh, we have a software team uh, and they're really where the SSI itself proves that it can walk the walk as it were. Um, and we engage with different software projects. We do software consultancies. We've done, as you can see, a number of them over the years. We're also heavily involved in policy. Um, out of our policy initiative came the area of uh, research software engineering. I'll speak more about that shortly. Uh, we're also involved in UKRI long-term strategy and we're on kind of 29 different national and international committees um, because we are, we're, we're connected in that way so that when, what we hear from the community can get to the right decision makers. Uh, we also have an outreach platform, um, a website, 170 external contributors. So it's not just us writing the content. We have 20,000 unique visitors a month on this is on uh, www.software.ac.uk. And we have over 7,500 followers on Twitter. And there's often lively interaction on, on Twitter. Um, we also are heavily involved in training. Um, so this is uh, capability and capacity building. Uh, and, you know, we, we've sup helped support a number of workshops, learners uh, and instructors. Uh, and we also have a community theme. That's the area that ch which I lead, where we run a network of over 140 fellows. Um, uh, and we've organized uh, numerous, numerous workshops and supported numerous workshops. Okay, so all of this, um, all of these things that we do, um, what are the goals here? Well, it's engagement with the domains, it's helping research software grow, it's capability and capacity, teaching people new stuff and increasing the number of people who can do that stuff. Uh, networking and um, cross-pollination of ideas, uh, recognizing software roles, this is uh, research software engineering and, and partnering with the right people to help, uh, you know, improve impact. So the uh, really the nascent area of, of support for COPs um, comes under engagement with domains. So the fellowship program itself, um, I'm not really going to go into too much detail on the fellowship program. This slides, I'll make slides available afterwards. But the, uh, what I would like to highlight here is that we've run, we've run this program since 2012. We've run a, a survey on the fellows to look at really the, the impact it's had and people have benefit, benefited from, from them and they feel that it's benefited their area and their domains. There's a lot of information that came to us in terms of what people were planning individually uh, for their particular area and their particular domain. So really the community as a practice initiative is trying to uh, do something which scales it up to particular communities helping out a community. Now, there's no money involved at the moment although there is time and effort involved um, in terms of support, but I'll cover some more of that shortly. So highlighting some of the fellow stories is in terms of the information that we've kind of collected and some of the experiences over here. Uh, bottom left is Robin Grant, and she looks um, in behavioral neuroscience. Uh, and she was in a situation where there are a number of tools in her area um, which were not very well connected. So she was using her fellowship and also organized this um, conference um, session in, in Manchester, uh, which brought together one of the side 
kind of workshops is bringing together different model developers to help uh, people to integrate their codes. We have other um, impacts, uh, top right here, Stephen Eglin from Cambridge, who's uh, also a neuroscientist. Uh, and he uh, was really focused on trying to improve um, uh, coding standards in neuroscience. And um, he's running currently the code check initiative to kind of like allowing people to assess each other's software, um, kind of like peer review of code. Then you have things like James Baker's library carpentry, which is a whole new curriculum uh, of material, which was then taken on by the Carpentries Initiative um, and run as one of their core offerings, which really um, developed a syllabus, which were a curricula, which was focused on people who are dealing with texts. We've also, coming back to the open call for projects um, where we've been dealing with multiple projects and really helping people with their correctness, usability, maintainability. I mean, there's some impressive software mentioned this morning. Um, so it might in, in situations sometimes where the software is, is great, um, you have these things in, in order. There might be areas of strength, there might be areas of weakness, but sometimes it might be a consultancy around how do you make your community grow? How do you make it more appealing to outside uh, contributors? Uh, what standards do you have for ECRs, PhD students to contribute to the code? And there's pretty some, like, um, just to reiterate, there were some very skilled people this morning, but not everyone, uh, and not all projects are in that situation. And also, the, um, the, there is a kind of like a pathway that, uh, that it seem, seems quite easy, but it can be quite fraught to actually walk to, to, to make a difference. We also offer kind of software services. Um, we were the, the first ones to really put together a checklist for software management plans. Um, this is something that Sarah King mentioned this morning about the, the EPSRC would like to know how, what you're going to do with the software that you develop, how are you are going to go about managing your software assets. Um, and in partnership with that, there's also the idea of software evaluation. So you can go along and evaluate your software uh, and see, you know, whether you have all of the, you know, the testing and the documentation and the licensing and everything's and everything's right. Um, so that it's more useful for yourself and more useful for, for others. So uh, in terms of training, I know one of the questions this afternoon uh, will be uh, about training. Um, in terms of, uh, we partner with the Carpentries Initiative, um, and that's in terms of capability building, uh, you know, increasing people's skills uh, and capacity building, increasing the number of people, this whole idea of an instructor training program, uh, and, and kind of community support, kind of encouraging people to use their, their format for presenting, presenting lessons, because there's a lot of support for rather than developing your own, uh, your own method. Uh, and there was, um, uh, you know, computational uh, maths package called uh, GAP, which took this approach um, and it made it more, it made it easier for them to actually deliver training. Um, so there's a number of guides as well, uh, again, on the website, which are of uh, general use we're in a number of events. Our major annual event is the collaborations workshop. So this is quite useful from a couple of perspectives. One is the perspective of the topics that it covers, culture change, productivity, sustainability, um, open research, those sorts of things. Uh, but also in terms of the method of delivery, um, where we have um, speed logging sessions, we have um, lightning talks, we have kind of collaborative idea sessions where people come together and try to create something akin to a hack day pitch. So it's a way of um, uh, really giving people experience in those uh, aspects so that they can take those back to their uh, domain specific uh, or cross cutting areas. We've also run specific workshops in discussing topical matters around software licensing and credit and uh, research data visualization, Docker, uh, and 
expertise in particular areas, for example, measuring the impact of workshops, which is kind of like a, a meta topic, uh, and also the workshop on sustainable software, sustainability, talking about long-term sustainability of software, and really giving an overview of what's happening in the different areas, and that included the areas of cultural heritage, um, and, you know, enhancing the community uh, in terms of uh, Rana Carpentry Connect, which is a spin-off from the main Carpentries workshop, bringing, uh, the, having a, an event in the UK, which brought a lot of people from the training community together to talk about best practice. They're a friendly bunch, you can see in the bottom right. Um, so the rise of the research software engineer, uh, it was interesting, I was looking around at acoustics dot uh, ac dot uk looking under the jobs and uh, a lot of them would i think um, fall under the category of research software engineer um but it was a term that was coined first at one of our collaborations workshops back, back in 2012 um and they're, they're people who write software more than uh have a research agenda as it were they identify more with that rather than people we'd call researcher developers people who are researchers who also write code but these are, this set of people are people dedicated to help others with their research through uh, software engineering. And as you heard from Sarah, there is a call out from EPSRC currently for RSE Fellows, uh, which is a great uh, way to get recognition. And you know, people are using their fellowships to actually enhance the domain. So there might be somebody from the acoustics area which would want to apply and have a plan for the area, or there are uh, or for actually the other the other thing that's useful for is um, people who w want to try and establish a research software engineering a unit in an institution which doesn't have one. Um, so this has been an onward growth, and we now have the Society of Research Software Engineering, and there are other um, similar organisations that are inspired by what we've done in the UK, in the US, and in the Netherlands and in Germany. So we partner with a, a number of broad uh, institutions. Um, RC is equivalent in the US to the SSI. Then you've got real high level uh, organizations such as the G7 expert group on open science, which literally is one expert from each G7 country coming to talk about open science. And uh, so one of our co is sits on there. And there's other various uh, panels so you know there, there's reach there for, for taking some of the issues that we hear about uh, higher up to the right uh, uh, to the right people for decisions one of the things that we're doing at the moment is really looking at promoting software as a research output um, this is kind of a basic analysis of looking at the different research uh, grants um, and looking at terms which would kind of imply either clearly or by implication whether things were had a research at the software side so they might have a software side not mention any terms in which case we wouldn't see that but you're looking at around 30 percent a third of research had was software reliant so you know clearly software itself is important it's not always recognized though so one of the things that we're trying to do to help in this area is we're running this uh, thing called the uh, uh, hidden ref uh, REF is the Research Excellence Framework, and this is the thing that assesses universities and university units of assessment, and then funding is associated with that. So it's quite uh, political and important for universities. So 97% of the submissions tend to be publications. Other outputs are accepted, but generally people are, are pushing their publications because they're well understood. And it can be an artifact of a risk-averse strategy, but it's understandable given the fact that funding is, is tied with this and is highly kind of competitive from the from the university's um, reputational perspective. So we're running this thing called Hidden Ref, which is uh, to recognize people and outputs that are often missed in research evaluation, submissions of 300 words. So at the moment we're there, we're still collecting and announcing categories and then submissions will be open. People can help uh, via social media, nominating self for a panel even, suggesting a new category. You know, because we do believe that recognizing those vital to research advances research. Um, I think we all know the kind of the importance of better research practices. Um, one of the pieces of research which led to the some of the decisions around austerity, um, you know, had errors in it. 
um, from an Excel spreadsheet. So it's quite damning that you know so many people's lives are affected by this. Um, so under communities of practice. So what do we mean by community of practice? So this term was kind of uh, termed by Tina Wenger and John Lave in um, the research that they did on educational uh, communities. So it's groups of people who share a concern or a passion for something that they do or learn how to do it better, they interact regularly. So you've got the domain, you've got the community uh, and you've got the, the practice as it were. So SSI has done a lot of work with communities of practice over the years, um, kind of <laughs> establishing the RSC Society, um, the, the WASC community is a community, the Research Software Alliance, you know, different kind of high level organisations looking at research uh, sustainability, the, the WSP community uh, who look at software engineering and science and engineering, software sustainability science engineering, the fellows network that we built, carpentry instructors, and also what the fellows link out to and, and, and do themselves um, in terms of some of them might be, you know, uh, experts in astronomy and contribute, a number of them contributed to, uh, to AstroPi, a number of them contributed to, to, to library carpentry and growing that. So what's new? So we're, we're trying to offer some kind of tailored support for existing communities of practice to help them deal with their software side. Kind of what, what do we mean by that? So, you know, want to help them with their kind of state of software skills in their community, um, help them assess training needs, maybe help run some, some carpentries workshops uh, with them um, and, you know, understand their collaboration needs, see if we can bring any of our collaborative technology to help them uh, get the right people connected. It is early days though, there, there are, uh, in terms of, in terms of the support. As a, um, on the previous side, we are working, for example, on the right hand side, you can see we are working with the National Biofilms uh, Innovation Centre. And we've just started working with them to help do these, do these steps. So it's worth taking a step back and thinking, well, even in a community as mature as this one, in terms of the software that I've seen today anyway, um, although maybe not all the pieces of software in the community are, are like what we've seen today. Um, you know, are people doing all the, the right things? Is there version control, reproducibility? Is there testing? Is there documentation? Is there clear licensing? Are, do PIs and people who are looking after early careers researchers allow them the time and the commitment to actually get these things done? So it's not just a matter of methods, but it's also a matter of, of culture as well. So in terms of assessing software skills, um, just wanted to highlight some, there was some early work done by this uh, very SIG, um, which was reported by Amelia Gully. And some of the things that you mentioned around potential solutions of knowledge bases and training and standards. And then I've put, and then, you know, how do you move that forward? How do you, um, you know, you have a lot of excellent people coming together, but then how do you, how do you move this forward inside a particular community? For training needs, again, what do we see as need? Uh, what curricula need developing? Are there open formats for sharing curricula? curricula? How do you mature people through um, the whole training regime from like learners to experts? You know, is there a path? There is in, in software carpentry, a path for people to get from being a learner to being a helper, to being an instructor, to, um, and then to develop a curricula. So being able to see the way that um, it's happened you know, can help inform activities rather than having to start them and do them from scratch. Um, you know, some of the first steps might be offering training, um, you know, what's more important, data handling or automation skills. And I mentioned the word toolboxes here because toolboxes are not, I'm not using that in the same way that you, toolboxes have been mentioned today. So, uh, but, it's certainly the same term as knowledge base, you know, and how do you go about making one? What are the problems? What are the solutions? What, how to, which software do you use, etc. Again, collaboration needs, how do you get the right people talking to each other? You know, the right sort of credit for people who are technical versus who are the research leads. We heard before somebody didn't get their name on a particular thing because they were 
the software person, which I think is a, a real shame. My phone's telling me uh, I'm, out of, I'm out of time. Uh, interruptibility and, and collecting lessons learned because there was some brilliant lesson learned this morning in, in terms of the, the different products. And knowing that upfront can really help people. So in conclusion, we have a long history of working and developing COPs and we're moving in the direction of helping and advising communities of practice with respect to research software perspectives. So I want to say thank you. There's lots of people involved in SSI, lots of collaborators and thank you to our funders. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions, I'll stop there.